I've lived in Canada my whole life, and if there's one thing that I've learned from traveling across the country, it's that if you look hard enough, you'll come across some pretty incredible sights. Now the problem is that most of us don't look hard enough, and instead, we just shoot straight for the big ticket places. And even though those are all beautiful, it pushes us to forget about the lesser known gems throughout this country, just like the region of Western Newfoundland. And what I mean is that rural Newfoundland is not all empty space and small towns, we can actually go to national parks and UNESCO World Heritage Sites, just like Grossmore and right behind me. And in fact, that's our first stop of today. So let's go and explore. Beyond its endless forests, stunning ocean fronts and towering fjords lies an incredibly rare landscape that offers a scientific window into the past, but also potentially into other worlds. This is known as Tablelands, one of just two places in the world where you can get a glimpse at the Earth's mantle. The mantle is known as the soul of the Earth. It's a deep layer of rock found miles beneath the crust, and it's full of toxic metals, which is why you will see very rare levels of vegetation here. In fact, even though tectonic plates shifted about 500 million years ago, Tablelands has only been visible for about 12,000 years. Yeah, it's not often that you come across a place in the world where you can look directly at the Earth's mantle. But wow, wow, what a start! We get to say, say these are the moments that make the memories and that you never forget. Now, as you can see, the winds definitely took over, causing us to lose our balance on what was a very simple two-kilometer walking loop, and we also had a couple of cat issues too. <laughs> That's okay. You're good. You almost blew away. I did. I'm not heavy enough. This is what happens when you eat too healthily. You lose weight and you take it by the elements. It's hard to find the right words to describe Tablelands other than extraterrestrial because this place definitely doesn't look like it comes from planet Earth. And that's why you travel. That's why you get out of the ordinary. You stop going to the main cities. You stop finding all the hidden gems out in the world. Obviously, it's a national park. But still, table lands, how often do you walk on the Earth's mantle? But this is just one stop of the entire day exploring world life and rural life here in Newfoundland. Let's keep going. In sharp contrast to table lands is Western Brook Pond. Now, this is one of Canada's most photographed spots, but the photo op usually happens from up top after a long hike, whereas today, we'll be seeing the fjords from sea level. And so to get to this boat tour, we actually have to take a 45 minute walk through the woods, which is awesome because more exercise, more places to see. But one problem, attention, bear in the area, like bear, not bear, potential bears. There's, there is one, hopefully we don't see them. Western Brook Pond is a pond that got carved out by glaciers over 25,000 years ago. And what's left for us to marvel are billion year old cliffs, waterfalls 2,000 feet up in the air where the water is so high that it turns to mist before hitting sea level, and of course, some pretty neat natural wonders. In fact, just an hour ago, I honestly thought I was walking on Mars, and right now, I feel like I'm somewhere in the middle of Norway, but as the tour went on, we were slowly reminded why we are not in either of those locations, but rather we're in Newfoundland, where the people are hospitable, fun, and exciting. First song I'm gonna do is all about being a rowdy Newfoundlander. So if you know the words, don't be shy to help me out. Here we go. As the body builds the boat, and as the body sails, and as the body just stays, and as the body sails, and as the body sails, and as the body sails, Moments like these are some of the coolest when you do road life, especially through rural Newfoundland. Because a lot of us have the perception that Newfoundland is just empty space, small towns, and relatively boring scenery. But if you just look behind me at these massive fjords, you know that's not the case. <laughs> Woo! 
So I've noticed so far, Gros Morne is a park that has everything. It has an ocean, it has big mountains, it has flat ranges. And what's so cool is that there's a full-on community deeply nestled all the way into the park. And these Newfoundlanders just really live right on the ocean. And if we're talking about rural life, well, this is kind of the epitome of that. If there's anything in life that I love, it's watching a great sunset. Now, I will drive miles in the wrong direction just to find the best possible spot to watch the sun go down. And from this past week in Newfoundland, we have had no shortage of amazing sunset spots. Rocky Harbor, a town of just under a thousand people located inside Grossmore National Park, was a spot that honestly, Mike and I just stopped at to get some cell service and answer a few emails. But once I saw what the sunset looked like over there, I had to forego all of that and just take a seat at the beach and think about life. I think as human beings, especially as people who live in major cities, we tend to overcomplicate life and stress about so many different things, but traveling on the road through Newfoundland, if it has taught me anything, it's taught me to slow it down, to start talking to more people, and to start interacting with the environment. Like this, standing on this big rock with the waves right behind me, staring out at the beautiful colored houses here in this town, and just living and breathing. People actually live here. Like you pass through a small town where there's literally no grocery store, no gym, none of that. You just wonder, what do these people do for a living? And like, how do they get by? And how are they so happy? And a whole bunch of questions like that. And it just makes you think, is what you're worrying about right now in life all that important? We often spend a huge amount of our time worrying about things that we cannot control. When instead, we should be using that time to focus on things that we can control, things that make us happy. And that is why I love being able to just sit, reflect and enjoy a beautiful sunset because it is one of those rare moments in life when everything stops and you just get to be at peace with yourself. Now, if you're watching and you're new here, I'm Will and the channel is Sprout and my goal is to provide you with adventures, guides and advice to make the most of life. And so as you can see, I'm showing you a place in Newfoundland that I don't think any of us expected existed. And I hope that I can inspire you to get out and explore places like this while also always having that perspective of being healthy, staying healthy and enjoying your life as much as possible. And so if you're enjoying the content in this video and that of any from the previous ones in the Newfoundland series, I invite you to subscribe. It's free. You can always unsubscribe if you want later, but at least I can guarantee that you're gonna to continue to get more and more of these videos in crazier and crazier places. And so with that, let's continue on with this video. After all that exploring and not much eating, you can only imagine how hungry we are. So we're currently in Corner Brook, Newfoundland, a town of 32,000 that honestly looks landscape-wise like Beverly Hills. And we just found a sushi place and we're having sushi. There's really nothing like finding a hidden gem when you least expect it. But on top of that, there's also almost no better feeling than when you're on a long drive and you can get out of the car, stretch your legs, and just see where in the world you are. So if you guys have watched the last few videos on Newfoundland, you know it's province number one of 10. And it's also the most isolated province of the bunch, which means not only is it isolated from the rest of Canada, but everywhere that we're going in Newfoundland are actually really far away from each other. So sometimes a five hour drive for us actually ends up taking nine or 10 hours because we stop so frequently and we just want to get out and see the province in between the locations and not just rush to go to place to place. And that's how it should be when you're on a trip. Anyways, anyways, I'm gonna get back in the car. I'm gonna continue on to the campground. Our final destination is Pirate's Haven, an indigenous adventure resort offering some incredible ATV experiences. And for the next two days, we'll be paired up with a group of riders from New Brunswick who have brought their side-by-sides all the way over from their home province just so they could ride across Newfoundland. Now, I've never been ATVing before, but like they say, there's always a first time for everything. And oh baby, this is the right place to do it. It's our halfway point on this ATV tour and right behind me, the whole crew is located right on beachfront, lakefront access here in the middle of 
honestly nowhere. We all got cold beer, we got great company, and now it's time to go and eat some traditional Newfoundland food. We're getting ready to do our trail lunch here now, our mug up we call it, and here we got moose sausage. Ooh, prepared with fresh moose and a mixture with pork. You hunt it yourself? Yes, I do hunt it myself. Mm. Wow. Paul, these are moose burgers? This is moose burgers, yep. Wow. Moose, this is two third moose I was saying and one third beef. So while I eat this lettuce wrap moose burger, I just want to say all the people that I'm with, all the people that you see behind me that are strangers are from New Brunswick, but they all speak a very, very similar accent on Quebecois French. <laughs> For my entire life, anytime I would hear someone speak that kind of accent, I would say, wow, look at these Quebecois people. It just so turns out I forgot about Acadia. And so it makes you think in life, do not ever assume that you know everything. There's always new information out there that can prove to add more value to your life. And so that's why traveling is so important because it gives you perspective and uh, gives you a beautiful view and the chance to try some cool stuff like a moose burger. So cheers. I think that almost five hours of ATV through mud, sand, and dust would be enough for us, but it isn't. Because it's our last night in Newfoundland, Mike and I have our sights set on finding one last incredible sunset spot. The group was honestly so accepting, so receptive, that they invited Mike and I to go sit by the fire with them. That's what we're gonna do next. It's pretty insane to think that you can have this in your own country. I mean, whether you're Canadian or not and you're watching this, the point of this travel series is really to show you to explore your own backyard and to always try and do things that are outside your comfort zone. I'm really trying to indulge in the culture of the place, the local cuisine, and meet all the people and hear about their stories because the more people that you can touch on this planet, the bigger change you can have in this world. And that's my goal, inspire one million people to pursue their dream career and enjoy your damn life to the fullest. To be honest, after about six days here, I can confidently say I love Newfoundland. This was a great province, but now it's time to go and explore the rest of Canada and start adventures, guides, and advice to make the most of life throughout Nova Scotia. Coming up on Sprout, I'll be learning how to log roll and throw axes from a seven-time world champion, fish for lobster in rural Nova Scotia, and be driving across Canada's most scenic highway. All of this starting next week. Make sure to subscribe, so I'll see you guys on the other side of this ferry ride in Nova Scotia. And remember, it's a mindset.